Esther George told Steve today, the stock market, they don't have a big problem with the stock market going down. Now, if the credit market seized up, maybe that would influence the Fed more than the stock market, Steve. But what about this idea that Minard uh, puts forth, uh, that they are perhaps too aggressive in the face of what is an undeniably slowing economy? So I, I think the jury's still out on that, Scott. I, I don't think you could say that definitively. I think, uh, you know, Scott Minor has a point of view on that. But I think, you know, let, let me preface what I'm about to say by saying that Esther George is a very, very nice person, one of the nicest Fed presidents I've known over two decades. She feels Jim Labenthal's pain. She's sorry for Jim Labenthal's pain. But she's not about to do anything about Jim Labenthal's pain and the pain of those um, <clears throat> people who are experiencing a downturn in the stock market. I came here to sort of figure out was there some threshold that we were near of pain in the stock market? And uh, Esther George told me she's watching it. She's looking at it. She's aware of it. But it's not time to make that change right now. I think that was pretty clear uh, from, 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 the, from her comment. She still wants to move in 50 basis point increments, not ready to do 75, holding that back if it's necessary. Um, but what's happening now in the stock market, as far as she is concerned, as a voting member of the Federal Market Committee, is what has to happen, both in terms of tightening financial conditions as well as a reduction in the wealth effect from the stock market in order to get inflation under control. And that's pretty much where the Fed is hell-bent on doing it. Whether or not, as Scott Minard is positing here, they do it until something breaks. She said that she is watching certain things out there that make her a little bit optimistic, that there's some consumer preferences out there that she's seeing. People shy away from higher prices. Um, has some sense that maybe the Fed does not have to go quite as far. I threw her theory at me, or my theory at her, which is that um, uh, the Fed may have to go as high as 4 or 5%, and she said maybe we don't have to. She didn't say she wouldn't. She said maybe we don't have to. It, look, Steve, you're... you're you're the senior economic supporter, and you are the closest thing we have to an in-house economist. Do, do you think that earnings projections where they are at 250 for 2023 are too high? You know, um, I would say yes, but it's very interesting to me. I, I know you're going to sort of put the back of your hand at this answer here, Scott. Corporate profits as a percentage of GDP, in other words, historical relationship, are very high. There is room for corporate profitability to fall, give more money to workers, and for corporations to remain extraordinarily profitable. Um, I think it's really interesting when this inflation broke out, companies navigated it very well. And now you have some companies have sort of reached a limit. I thought the, um, I believe it was Walmart that said they do not on a cultural basis, want to charge so much more because they're thinking of the long term. And right now, Wall Street doesn't want to give Walmart credit for that thinking of the long term of driving away customers. It's very interesting to watch that, Scott, and see that there is some limitation. And by the way, that plays right back into the Esther George interview, seeing there are some limits to how far customers will go to pay up a price and a limit to the uh, inf uh, prices that these companies will charge. It does help to attenuate the inflation problem over time.